Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Fear the Lord, all you his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Imagine all the saints before the throne of Almighty God. Not so much in a linear linear way, but in a three-dimensional way, like a sphere surrounding God. And notice how as it's a circle, some are nearer to God and some are further away. But all are gravitating toward the core, toward God. So even though a saint might be further away as the as the circular fear surrounds God. There are some that are closer to Him and some of them are further out. It's all God's divine, infinite wisdom and providence is is having it that way. He's, He's arranging it all. Not one single saint can be the same as another saint. It's like those snowflakes. Every snowflake never matches another snowflake. They're all different. Even though we aspire to who they are, we love their virtues and we try to imitate their virtues, but at the end of the day, we're all different in very many different ways. So what am I talking about here? The the greatness of God is communicated by, listen to this, the variety of His creation. Talking about things and men alike. Think of the fruits of the earth. Imagine if God only made one single fruit in the entire world. All we had was an apple. And there was nothing else to eat but just an apple. Well, I don't know about you, but it will be quite boring for me when I go to eat. That would be a little boring. But we have thousands of different fruits. Get this, for the thousands of different needs that we have. We have, for example, an orange. If you need to eat an orange, it could be... Uh, stocked up with vitamin C so as to avoid the flu and uh, the colds when they come in the, w- in the winter time. Or we can have a cactus. <laughs> a cactus could heal cuts. I have a story about that. When I was studying in Rome, philosophy in 1993, we had a very holy old bishop from Mexico saying Mass for a seminary. And I saw he came out as he processed out to start the Mass. He was wobbling, like he was really walking, really weird. I thought he was drunk, you know. But I said, well, what's, what's wrong with, the, with His Excellency? Why is he wobbling around as he walks up to the altar? I said, well, he had a very, a very uh, dangerous uh, scare. And he had a, a, a very tragic uh, accident in a car. He was near death. And he was in a hospital and they operated on his legs. And, uh, and, and, and if they didn't have another operation to follow it, soon after he would lose his legs. It was that grave. And so they told the bishop, says, we want to operate on you again to save your legs, but we got to wait for the healing a little bit. He says, give me a pitcher of cactus juice. You know, but it has to be homegrown. It can't be that uh, artificial stuff in the store. And so they went out and he squeezed a cactus and uh, he took his drink and he started, he gulped down the whole cactus juice and then they 
Doctors were amazed. They said, oh, let's operate on him. He's ready to go. He got all healed very quickly out of all his little uh, his uh, incisions were all healed. And on and on we can go about the thousands of fruits of the earth. Uh, I wouldn't want to be normally eating cactuses, but uh, if I need to, uh, I might have to. And so the saints are just like that. The saints have this great variety. And God has designed them in all different ways and colors and brands and styles to help the great needs that God has created, so to speak, within all of creation. So as to show the great glory of God, to show the glory of the Lord. Remember, the need is the mother of inventions. So when there's great need, when there's great struggle, there comes out great heroism and these different manifestations, these different ways. And so it is to, in order to establish an overall balance that God creates so many different saints for us to aspire toward and to honor and venerate to quench the thirst of so many needs, existential imperatives, to, re to be remedied and accomplished. For example, God knew that there will be all the innovators coming up in the 16th century that will kind of destroy the Catholic faith in many different vast regions of the world, of Christendom. And so therefore, a few centuries before, God rose up a St. Great Thomas Aquinas, one of the greatest minds in all of human history of the 7,000 years that we've been on this planet in order to counteract that, that avalanche, that tsunami of error and heresy that plagues us to this day and increases every single day with inside the Catholic Church. These errors are swirling all around Catholics today. So it's no longer from the outside, but it's inside the church. And so that's why God had to have provisions for that and bring up a Thomistic philosophy so that those who are humble and wish to cling on to the truth can be able to be guided in it safely and soundly, even though millions choose not to. Or God rose up a Saint Athanasius, to expel the errors of Father Arius and even St. Nichols uh, slapped them in a council, slapped them right in his face. So one saint excels in humility, another saint excels in spiritual poverty, another excels in penance, another excels in patience. So all this great variety, these, these great flavors and colors that make into a beautiful picture when all seen at the same time. So the same is true even for one state of life. And this is going to be the punchline of the sermon here, our application of the sermon to our own lives. Many of us have a specific vocation, a specific state of one's life. For example, a wife and a mother who tries to be a nun, she'll be a bad nun and a bad wife and a bad mother for wanting to be a nun <laughs> and trying to act like a nun. It's just the way, this way the calling is, you know. Or if a nun tries to be a Walmart cashier, she will not be a good Walmart cashier and she will not be a good nun, therefore. And so we got to stop all this oranges trying to be apples and apples trying to be oranges uh, within life. It's important to discover and analyze your talents and your virtues and your strengths 
and take stock of your faults, your failings, and yes, even your sins. And get placed in this marvelous plan of God. Find your place. I always say it. If I'm getting brain surgery, I don't want my doctor to have been flippant in his studies and cheating for passing grades. I don't, I don't want that type of brain surgeon who had to cheat his way through studies. So therefore, be who you are. Even though that might be very difficult. But it's uh, what God is trying to call us to do today. By this beautiful feast of all saints. So many different ways of life that made a great impression because of their willingness to embrace what God is calling them to. We need, for example, a Saint Anthony of the Desert because back in the 4th century he set the tone for the monastic observance. And so now thousands after him do not need to go to a literal dark, damp cave for 50 years and catch diphtheria, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was good for St. Anthony of the desert, but it's not, maybe not been good for all the future monks to come. You don't have to go into a cave and live and get diphtheria and die. I mean, you might be called to that, but that's a very rare thing, because St. Anthony already did it. He, he paved the way so now the monks can just go to a nice monastery that's nicely built. Uh, soon yours, yours will be built pretty soon too, and uh, hopefully it'll be modeless. And, uh, and then, then you can live an austere life there. And that'll be good. So to end this sermon, it's important that we do not envy the exactness of a given saint overly envy those exactness of the saints. But that we should correspond to God's grace in discovering what God is calling each one of us to be and to do. Let us be grateful, therefore, and deliberate in living the vocation that He has given to us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.